before we talk about climate and snow, which is something we definitely want to talk about, uh, I want to start off with the, the issue that seems to definitely at the top of the national chart besides our corrupt federal government, and that would be gun control. And before we, we get into the specifics, I want to read some stuff that you have on your website here. It says, I, I am a Vietnam era veteran, served in the U.S. Army as a military policeman and correctional specialist. Um, and then he's, and and so I want to that that's important just to understand your perspective because you have you have firearms training you've you've worked with a weapon that I understand is similar to the AR-15. So yep. tell me tell me where you stand on gun control. I, I don't talk about gun control. I talk about gun safety. Let me give you a little bit more of my background. Excellent. Um, I've been a hunter since I was 12 years old. I presently own two rifles and a shotgun. I have owned weapons, firearms, pretty much my whole life. Um, so I'm, I'm somebody that uses firearms, someone that's comfortable with firearms, who owns firearms. And, and when I was in the Army, I shot the M16, and that's the military version of the civilian AR-15. The difference between an AR-15, the civilian version, and the M16, the military version, is the military version, you can put it on full auto. It could be like a machine gun. but an AR-15 is an assault weapon, and it's designed for one thing. It's designed to kill a lot of people very quickly, very efficiently, and it's really good at its job. It's a military weapon. That's what it's designed to do. Here's my position. There is no, we should have an assault weapon ban. There's no reason why anyone other than somebody in the military should own an assault weapon. Let's talk about magazine size. They will have, I can say magazine or I can say clip, but that's where you put the, the rounds or the, the bullets in. They have magazines that will hold 30 rounds. There's no need for that. I hunt all the time. I hunt with a, a, a rifle that I can have one in the chamber and three in the magazine. That's all you need. If you want to have 30, you, what, what's the purpose? It's, again, it's, it's designed to kill a lot of people very quickly, and it's really good. Look at what happened in Las Vegas. That guy had you know, clips with 30 rounds, and with an assault weapon and a bump stock, you can pop those clips out and put a new one in, and look at what it did, 58 people dead. Um, universal background check, that's absolutely required. Right now, you can buy a firearm. <clears throat> you might be uh, convicted of domestic violence, and you couldn't go in and buy a firearm from a gun shop, but because we don't have universal background checks, you can buy off the internet, you can buy at a gun show, and that, that's a loophole that you can drive a truck through. That needs to be closed. Um, and so I would also say about the um, clips, you shouldn't have a clip that holds more than 10 rounds. They want armor piercing bullets. I mean, I've shot deer, I've shot moose, and you know what? None of them had body armor on. You don't need an ar armor piercing bullet. That's a cop killer. That's designed for one thing, to go through body armor, and the only people that I know that were um, this thing keeps slipping out, that wear body armor or police, and, unless we shouldn't put their har their lives in, in harm's way. Uh, I also, I just wrote a letter to the, the students down in Florida today, and I added something that is not on my website, but I want to talk about sure. it. Sure. And, that, and that's, we should be licensing people to have firearms. You know what, we license people to have drive a car, and if we had licensing for uh, firearms as well, you'd have to go through training, you'd have to go, go through a background check, you'd have to, uh, you know, do all these things. And again, the idea is not to keep guns out of everybody's hands. That's that's fine, but to keep the hand keep them out of the hands of the people that shouldn't have them. What we have down in Florida and at all these mass shootings is a clash between values. On one hand, you've got the uh, um, Declaration of Independence, and it says we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that's counterbalanced against the Second Amendment right to, to bear arms. And up to this time, and I hate to use this word, someone said don't use it, but the uh, right to bear arms trumped, has trumped, on for, I mean, I hate that word, <laughs> has, has life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. You know what? 17 people just got screwed out of their life. Yeah. And, and for what? So somebody can own a firearm? No, it should. The uh, we should have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness over someone's right to bear to bear arms. Yes, if you want to own a firearm to hunt with or for for self protection, I'm right there with you because I've got the same thing. But that doesn't include an assault weapon. 
So I, I, I appreciate your statement on that and all of your clarity on that. And I, I was showing you actually, I actually, we have that from your website, your, your statement on, on the school shooting. I was showing it, but I'm glad you said most of those things because you've got that on here. Um, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So the, the First Amendment trumps the Second Amendment. I know we hate the word Trump, but I, I it, know. it really does. I, I, I'm glad you said well, that. But actually, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness is in the Declaration of Independence. It's not in the First Amendment. That's true. It's, it's in the Declaration of Independence. It's but of you know what? It's one of the unalienable rights that we have. And, and what is happening is we have this unalienable right that's being overridden by somebody's desire to own every firearm that the military has. That's not what I want. Right. Exactly. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, and plus, you have the NRA, you have the gun lobby, which part of, and I'm going to get into this because, uh, y you know, it's it's a key to your platform. From what I was reading on your site, this is one of your key issues, and that is campaign finance reform. And we've seen what the NRA lobby has done to our Congress. So why don't we talk about uh, that? I love how these young people down in Florida are saying, you know what, you take money from the NRA, you are complicit with these murders. And I believe that. I Campaign finance reform is my number one issue. It's, you talk about a totally unsexy issue to run on, campaign finance reform is it. But it is the only thing that will absolutely make a systemic change in, in the way we do things. Right now, these people get elected taking all this money from... I was looking at uh, opensecrets.org today, and I was looking at how much money Walden was, was getting from all these industries. Holy cow. I mean, we're not talking 10000 bucks. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he always says, oh, I just take this money, and all I say is thank you. And I say, you know what? You believe that? Yeah, thank you. And I say, you believe that? I've got a bridge I'd like to sell you <laughs> if you're that gullible. <laughs> because it's just not the case. Yeah. I take money only from individuals. When I get elected, you know what? The only question I'm going to ask was when somebody wants to see me is, where do you live in Congressional District 2? And if they say, well, I'm a lobbyist, I'm going to say, do you live in Congressional District 2? And if they say no, I'm going to say, hey, there's the door. See you later. I'm talking, I'm going to represent the people in Congressional District 2, not Greg Walden's contributors. And that's who he's representing. Uh, I'm glad you said that, and and I've been showing some slides here because Walden really those does. are great. He's, he's those. <laughs> that's that's what I was looking at today. Yeah, Open Secrets is wonderful. All you got to do is follow the money. Are they a progressive? Are they actually going to work for you? Follow the money. And what's great about Jim is that I couldn't find any. <laughs> there's no trail. There's there's no reportings on Jim taking big old chunks of cash from corporations so they don't have it listed in the FEC filings. There, there is report on how much money Jim has brought in from individual contributions. We're going to look at that. But at first, I want to look at Open Secrets. And this is just Walden's money. And we've got the Association of Broadcasters, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Comcast, one of our faves, Dish Network, everybody. I don't know who Southern Co. is, but they said he was worth 25 grand. Um, uh, pharmaceutical health professionals, electric utilities, oil and gas, telecoms. That's like all of them. And if, and if you look on opensecrets.org, he's like number one or two from, all, from a lot of industries. Interesting. Interesting. And, and uh, we're also going to get, uh, you know, you've, got to, you've got to get through some uh, Democratic challengers in the primary, one right. of them being Jamie McLeod Skinner. And I was, I, at first, uh, look, this is, the, this is the thing. This is the thing. We're, we're, there's a lot of Democrats running, which is great. Correct. It's great, yeah. right? I, I'm yeah. all for the competition, but we have to be, we have to discern between a progressive Democrat, an established Democrat, or a, 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 a neo-Democrat. I call them corporate Democrats. Corporate Democrat, right? So this is Jamie McLeod Skinner, and she takes money from STS Engineering, which is aerospace, everybody. Um, Amazon, another one of our not-so-favorites. I don't even know how this is legal. The city of Santa Clara, California, I'm sure it is if it's on there, but I, it just seems weird that a city can say we want it's, it's to... It's in California. Uh, uh, Lewis and Clark, who apparently are still alive and donating money to campaigns. Boeing Co., um, Empire Broadcasting. So, you know, the aerospace industry, military, it looks like some of the same kind of corporate interests that you see with Greg Walden. So, you know... Uh, you know, hmm. Here's what happens. All these guys, and I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and said, you cannot run without taking all this money. And I said, you know what? Yes, I can. 
And I said, nothing changes until somebody changes. And I always look at Bernie Sanders. Yep. He raised $227 million in individual donations. I'm not Bernie Sanders, but I'm going to raise a million bucks after I get through the primary. And I absolutely believe that. I've watched, I mean, I, a lot of money comes through ActBlue. A lot of money comes just in the form of checks. And people are so sick and tired of watching these people go to Washington, D.C., forget where they came from and who the heck they're supposed to be representing. And start, and they represent their contributors. Okay. Boy, wouldn't life be different if if we had elected officials who actually represented us and not their contributors? The Koch brothers are going to put in $400 million into this, to, this midterm election. You think the Koch brothers are stupid? You think the Koch brothers are altruistic? Heck no. Those guys, that's a, that's a $400 million investment. And they just got a huge return on that investment back in December when the Republicans gave a trillion and a half dollars in tax cuts to the wealthiest and to the corporations. And then they gave a few little crumbs to the middle income and, and all, almost nothing to the lower income. Right. And, th and, that, and they keep billing it as this middle income tax cut. Bull-loney, it's a, it's a, call it what it is. It's a corporate giveaway and a, and a giveaway to the wealthy. And those are the donors. 